Here is the brain and head model. Here's the brain. You can see right uh, hemispheres of the cerebrum, the longitudinal fissure separating the hemispheres. These bulges coming up are generic gyruses. Folds going down are the generic sulci. So the mountains are the gyrus, the valleys is the sulcus. We have the various hemispheres, this uh, lobes I mean, this would be the frontal lobe. This top is the parietal lobe. And the back is the occipital lobe. On the lateral side would be the temporal lobe. So if we look over here, same brain, frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, temporal lobe, lateral sulcus. Here's the cerebellum. Here's the brain stem. So if we flip this over, you can see the arbor vitae. So that's the arbor vitae of the cerebellum. Here again is the cerebrum. Here is the uh, corpus callosum. Here's the septum pellucidum. Here's the fornix. All of this is the diencephalon, including the epithalamus ending in the penile gland, the thalamus with the interthalamic adhesion, hypothalamus with the mammillary body, there's the optic chiasm. Um, then from here down, this is all brain stem, including the midbrain with the, turn this, get a good view. The top bump here is the superior colliculus, the bottom bump is the inferior colliculus. So, if we look at this piece by itself, again the top bump is the superior colliculus, the bottom bump is inferior colliculus, superior colliculus, inferior colliculus. And then these ridges here on the lateral side of the midbrain, that is the cerebral peduncle, cerebral peduncle. Down here, this flat white area, that is the cerebellar peduncle. The cerebellar peduncle, we can see it because we were able to remove the cerebellum. Back to this view of the brainstem, midbrain, then pons, and then medulla oblongata. Uh, of course, we have the hole here, that is the interventricular foramen. This is the space, is the third ventricle leading to the aqueduct of the midbrain, and then this would be the fourth ventricle. Although you can only see it properly when the cerebellum is in place because the space between the pons and the cerebellum is where the fourth ventricle is. And then that leads to the central canal, the spinal cord. All right, um, we also have on this view, this, again here is the thalamus, but all of this tissue here, all of this tissue here is the caudate nucleus. That is all caudate nucleus behind the thalamus. The bluish area here, these bluish structures here and here are the choroid plexus, choroid plexus, choroid plexus. And then we have the nerves. This time we're going to like act the cranial nerves as they're going into the skull. So this is a view inside the skull. So here's a factory bulb, factory track optic nerve, then down here, this is the oculomotor nerve and the trochlear nerve. They both go into the same spot, so this spot, oculomotor nerve or trochlear nerve. Below that is the abducens nerve. Here's the trigeminal nerve. Then we have the facial nerve. Then on this side is the vestibulococular nerve. Then we have glossopharyngeal nerve, in the middle is the vagus nerve, accessory nerve, and hypoglossal nerve. So again, factory bulb, factory track, optic nerve. Coming in here is the ocular motor nerve and the trochlear nerve. Here's the trigeminal nerve, the abducens nerve, the facial nerve, the vestibulococular nerve, glossopharyngeal nerve, vagus nerve, accessory nerve, tra. Gloss, uh, hypoglossal nerve. And that is it for this model.